the world. We have now sealed you to the law court for you to come and tell the law court how that testimony was stage managed. I will give you the infantry. Who gave you the right and who gave you the permission? Question it when you are not working with the Nigeria Film Sensory Commission or you are not working with the Nigeria Communication Commission. I did not know when you were appointed to be the one to oversee, to be the one to oversee all the affairs of men of God. By that's by the way, I am calling you out today for you to be informed that it is on behalf of all the sons and daughters of Senior Prophet Jeremiah Moto Fein that I, Dr. Gideon Issa, on behalf of all sons, I have now charged you for you to tell the court how that miracle was stage managed and how that testimony was stage managed. It is even belittling to think that such a miracle or such a testimony of testifying of an appointment can be stage managed. This is, I'm not going to lie, for a long time I've been really concerned about the way people in Nigeria, Africans generally take things pertaining to Christianity and religion. But I, I didn't think that it was this serious. I'll, I've been concerned over the years about my people who are close to me, my friends and relatives, with their unreasonable behavior and unreasonable decisions in many things. But I didn't know that it was on such a large scale, where even up to this point where these people have been exposed, lots of these fake pastors have been exposed to actually be fake people who are sucking their followers dry. After the exposure, it's so shocking to see that this week, even this week, today is the 13th of August, this week still, some of their followers are saying, uh, God bless my papa, uh, God bless you daddy, our uh, Lord will uh, leave my daddy alone, uh, you don't know how God works. These things are so strange to me. I didn't know that even with evidence showing people that this person is not a man of God, There will still be people who are supporting and believing. Someone just explained to me that it is more than what I think, that it is actually that they are under a spell. I'm not sure about that, but it's gotten to the point where I never thought that I would say this. It looks like it might be the best thing for Africa if the churches are actually closed. Seriously. Years ago when we heard about countries where they didn't allow churches and Christianity, it was always painful to think about. But now, it looks like we need that to have some sanity in Africa because it's a blindfold that doesn't allow people to think. Imagine that Nigeria is a country where every other street has so many churches and the country is the way it is with people who just will not think, will not reason. And the reason why we don't understand, people don't understand when we say that churches are a major problem in the country, a, cause of, a major cause of the problems in the country. It is like this. It is that the churches do not teach what Christianity is about. What they teach is a reliance kind of lifestyle and a reliance kind of attitude where people should not employ their brains, which means that these people are dependent on someone else to guide them for life. It means that you don't exercise your brain and you get into the habit of not exercising your brain. And that is why we can have the kind of government that we have because everything that comes up that you can complain about, you will not complain because you will just be thinking and waiting for the day that God will do it. Because you'll go and talk to your pastor and your pastor will say, wait for God to do it. It is the same pastors that you're talking to now. It's the same pastors that the people talk to who say to wait for God to do it, who refuse to wait for God to do things for them, but employ armed guards and also take people to court. When people have issues and they want to take people to court, they want to take people up on it, they want to have people talk about it and resolve their issues, the same pastors will say, leave it to God. And yet, now you can see that these people will not leave things to God. With the high rate of hardship in Nigeria now, you've seen that the pastors are going to an extra mile. Well, let me stop calling them pastors. They are not pastors. I make a mistake when I say that. I don't even want to join the rest of the people who call them pastors because I know these people are not pastors. They're not men of God. It is not the same God that we talk about. 
definitely not the same God that we're talking about because if the principles of the God that I talk about do not position us in a place where we are enslaved to other people, to oppression, to punishment, and to abuse. Yes, God did not say that there will be no suffering for you as a human being living on earth. Things happen. There are difficulties and there are challenges in life. But there are so many things that the people that these people call pastors teach their followers to just suffer in while waiting upon God. And the reason why God doesn't answer those prayers is because God does not deal with those things that you can deal with by yourself, that he has empowered you to, to deal with. And you know, I don't think that these churches are going to be closed because another thing is they are a weapon in the hands of people that want to control people. It's a weapon of mass control. So if they continue to remain in, in existence, I assure you that if they were not a weapon of mass control for the government, the people in power, the authorities who need them to help to control large, large populations of people, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be in existence today. The only reason they're still in existence is because they are a weapon in the hands of these people. So I know that even those of us who would like them to be closed, we're not going to have that happen. Funny enough, just a few minutes ago, I was on a discussion with someone and we talked about, and I remember when Buhari had talked about maybe taxing the churches. At that time, I, I was actually worried because I was like, they shouldn't even touch these churches. This would be another way of closing down things. And then all of a sudden, we won't have churches, we won't have Christianity in Nigeria. So imagine that today now, imagine the irony of me now thinking today that I actually would agree, I would like for those churches in Nigeria to be closed. And it doesn't bother me as a Christian because I know that the real people who talk about the real principles of God and Christianity will continue to do so and will be able to reach people who are interested in really being in the spirit of Christianity. It's not going to... It's not going to be, it's going to be an issue for people who just want to do religiosity. And that is okay, because these are the people that are keeping us in the doldrums. And it's a delight to just see, right after that conversation, it was a pleasant surprise to get on my phone. And what did I see? That in Rwanda, the president has just closed about 6,000. Is this 6,000? Maybe even 600,000, because this thing is crazy. Like 6,000 churches and mosques. That is good for Rwanda. That can work for Rwanda. You know why? Because that president has shown that he's instilling discipline in that country. It's not going to work for every African country. So we can get excited, but it may not be helpful for us. It's not even going to work. Not only is it not going to, it's not going to work for every African country because our country, for instance, Nigeria, isn't going to want to employ that. They're not going to want to go that route because they need these people to help them to control the population to control people and to have them under mind control and tell them what to do so that they can get them to do their bidding. It's also another way of dividing us for election purposes and all that. But you see, Rwanda has instituted a kind of government and a lifestyle where there is more discipline. So there is little hope for us in that area. Look at what these churches are doing. Now that things have become so tough and people are calling out the fake pastors, they are afraid. They are now burying their fangs and doing everything in their power to make sure that their sources of livelihood will not be closed. What is their source of livelihood? Sucking on the people. They are vampires on the people, on the people who are supposed to be their congregation. Imagine this one. This one is threatening Very Dark Man because he's unhappy with the fact that Very Dark Man has carried his father, Papa Jerry Bobo, to the court. Papa, he's unhappy that Very Dark Man has exposed Jerry Bobo. So... It's a threat to their livelihood. And the reason why he's going this far is because if this happens, how are they going to be able to what, what that, how are they going to be able to have these people believing in them to continue to dole out their hard earned money to them? But they don't need to worry. They needn't worry because it's not likely to happen in a country like Nigeria. Not now, not right now. This they are still a, a huge tool in the hands of powers that be. I don't think that we can expect that to happen any day now look at all the different different things that these people are doing please you are talking to a billionaire i'm not a millionaire billionaire are you hearing me so go and tell 
your blackmailers and others tell them that this man is a billionaire. Don't you hear the name Papa J? The man model for you. Papa J, go and type it. Hey, Papa J, talk to me. Papa J, talk to you for where? Money in the bank. Don't you hear money in the bank? Don't you hear money in the bank? You know how many million I spend in a day? So this is the time. Go and get this red, this water, this red sea water. Go and get it because this is what you use above your children. You going to now use it for all your children. You going to use it for even your 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 your, your you are sick. You going to use it above. You put it in the water that you want to bath. Mix it. Your life will never ever remain the same. I want to tell you that it's, the hour has come once again. Your life will never ever remain the same. There are things that the angels of God is going to guide you for you to now cross with your special father. Like I showed you, we have different kind of waters. This is called the Red Sea water. We have this one. We also have the other one that uh, we used to cross. So if you don't have this one, you must have the other one. So that the crossover, it will be wonderful. Because you need to cross with your spiritual father. When you are crossing with the, the spiritual father, then the blessings of God that are going to cross with you, it will be so marvelous. It will be so wonderful. Because you need to cross with your spiritual father. Because God has sent you. So before we go cut, make um, I bring other videos on go use. So nobody today this man start this thing. So before pool of Besada water come, they don't already fed get red sea water. This particular video in post time 2019, December 31st. So that people will want cross over to 2020, go buy the red sea water. Now make I come bust here, see the irony of life. Immediately after they buy the water, the crossover, God can shock the world Pew! with COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> so people will cross over cross over to COVID-19 and we'll be kind to people that are not grateful you know I had last Sunday somebody laughed at me in his church and called me a thief and called me a rat claiming to give birth to an elephant <laughs> and he said that they are from the generation of giants and he forgot that it's a small David that killed a giant Goliath we are from the generation of giants if you are an offspring of a lion you cannot be a rat did you hear what i just said then the video went out within the week and he discovered that the person is calling a giant actually was given birth to by the rat and now they are quiet because they don't know which other videos are lined up to be released the reason why we release the video is because they say i was lying and it's important for me as a leader to show that i was not lying so we gave them small evidence so that they can see that we are not lying 1997 when we were there training those giants how to pray <laughs> Nineteen ninety seven, the video is in circulation. And from the generation of giants, if you are an offspring of a lion, you cannot be a rat. Did you hear what I just said? So it means that the pastor NNJ denied having been ordained by Pastor Damina. What does that why would he do that? And even if you're going to make that denial, why use that kind of tone? Even as a person who is not a preacher and a pastor, I am sure that if I was going to correct somebody about something like that, it would make more sense to address it in a matter-of-fact way and to just speak to the issue at hand. I don't think there will be any need to be derogatory in my presentation of those facts. On top of which, the pastor Damina has been in this ministry thing for much longer than the NNJ pastor. So how would he talk like this? Especially when it now turns out that Pastor Damina actually ordained him in his ministry. So he was actually his master, so to say, and yet he will turn around and speak about him in this way because he feels now that he's 
grown and he's a giant in the industry and he's bigger than Pastor Damina in his own eyes. And so because of that, he will speak to him and speak about him in this derogatory manner. And I think that this is the kind of thing that shows the congregation and the followers that the people that you're talking about are not pastors and they're not men of God because Christianity has a book that is supposed to be a guide for Christians. And in that book, it says that by their fruits you shall know them. There is nothing about this demeanor and behavior of the NNJ pastor here that shows anything of him having the fruit of humility and wisdom. And it's the same way that he behaved with that lady who was saying that she's giving a testimony in his church. When I saw that thing, I was so turned off by the attitude of the man. I was put off. I was I was shocked at it, honestly. Not because people started talking about it. When I saw it, I saw it before it started going around on social media. And I was shocked. I was I was like, I was baffled why, why a person who is supposed to be a pastor would be speaking in this way and behaving in this way. It's painful to see and painful to watch. And I'm happy that Pastor Damina had this video and brought it out to show him. And... I guess he has more in his arsenal. So if the NHG pastor wants to keep embarrassing himself, we're all here for it. We're just going to get popcorn and eat and watch as they destroy this thing. And you know, that's the thing about life. Every day for the thief, one for the owner. One day for the owner. They've been doing this thing and doing it and doing it all these years. And they've taken it overboard now because of the hardship, because of the, the rate of hardship in Nigeria. But, you know, one thing that could have made things different here is what's even the point of talking about that? Because I think that the real genuine pastors aren't going to be moved by what is happening. The only thing is that they're going to be feeling ashamed because people are going to be classing, classifying all of them as the same because people will be talking about he's a pastor, they're a pastor, and everybody, anybody who is not processing things will classify all of them as the same. But we know that they're not the same. So somebody was worrying on one of my posts talking about how a lot of people that could have been saved with with the fact that people are now going to have less trust in pastors. A lot of people that could have been saved will maybe now not be saved and all that. I don't think that that's a problem. That's nothing that we should worry about because I'm sure that God will reach who he will reach. It's, it doesn't have to be dependent on another man. If the churches and the pastors will push out of our visibility in, in, in Nigeria, it will do us a, a whole world of good because people can begin to learn to think. And in the end, at least they can save some money as well because they're just giving their money to vampires. If they were even giving their money to proper pastors and men of God, it would be a different thing. Nobody will be complaining because when they need help, these people will be there to help them. But they're giving their money to bottomless pits who are vampires, who are just keeping them there to use them and telling them that they're going to this place and that place to source this and that for them and giving them water and oil and giving them advice and things to destroy their lives. I know lives that have been destroyed by the advice that these people gave them. These people gave them advice because they didn't care. And eventually they found themselves out of that tunnel. They, they claw themselves out of that tunnel. But the ones who haven't had some real devastating things happen to them from these people are the ones who are still there supporting despite seeing it just goes to tell you the things that i've been saying that many times it's like animals in the wild take better decisions than a lot of human beings so i'm not so sure that human beings should be calling themselves higher animals you know because if you if you if a child sees something that looks like it's bad for it the child is going to withdraw so sometimes people should learn to behave like children but adults, adults find ways to justify things just because it's an easier way or because you really don't want to use your brain. You don't want to process things. It's a pity. It's a real crying shame. Now, let me ask you, what team are you on? Would you like for the churches to be closed? And also tell us what your reasons would be. Yes or no. Don't just say yes. Don't just say no. So that we we'll see how valid your reasons are. If you've actually processed this thing and if you can come up with any good reasons why you've made the choice that you've made. Share this video. Let's get people talking about this.